Hello, this is History Shorts with the Artifactual Scholar. Today, I'll be talking about Frederick Douglass and his time in New Bedford. Frederick Douglass was one of the most significant figures in 19th century America. An abolitionist, an advocate for civil rights and women's suffrage, his story is one of hardship, perseverance, and determination. Born enslaved on Maryland's eastern shore around 1818 as Frederick Bailey, he witnessed and experienced many of the cruelties of slavery. By his early teenage years, he had developed a yearning for freedom and had secretly taught himself how to read. In 1838, Fred Bailey had been leased out as a cocker in Baltimore, where he worked to waterproof ships in the busy harbor. It was in Baltimore that he met Anna Murray, a free black woman who worked as a domestic servant in the city. The two were soon engaged, but could not be married while Frederick was still in bondage. So, in September of 1838, Wearing a mariner's uniform made by Anna, Frederick boarded a northbound train out of Baltimore, hoping to reach freedom in the north. After a complex journey involving trains and ferries, passing through Delaware and Philadelphia, Frederick eventually reached New York City. There he found shelter with journalist and abolitionist David Ruggles. He was soon joined by Anna and the two were married. Though New York was a free state, slave catchers were active in the city. The newlyweds adopted the last name Johnson and then left New York. Using money given them by Ruggles, the Johnsons took a steamship to Newport, Rhode Island, then went by stagecoach to New Bedford, Massachusetts. Once in New Bedford, Frederick and Anna were welcomed and sheltered by Nathan and Polly Johnson, prominent African-American abolitionists. It was Nathan Johnson who encouraged Frederick and Anna to change their last name to Douglas. In New Bedford, Frederick Douglass had his first taste of freedom and earned his first money as a free man, working as a laborer for several of the shipping firms in town. In 1839, Frederick and Anna moved into their own house and started a family. Three of the couple's five children were born in New Bedford. During this time, New Bedford had a large free black population and was a center of abolitionist sentiment. The Douglasses became active in the movement Frederick was an avid reader of The Liberator, one of the leading abolitionist newspapers, and soon began speaking at the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. After one of his sermons at the church in 1841, Frederick was asked to address an abolitionist meeting on Nantucket. That speech was the starting point of his career as an orator and activist. Frederick quickly emerged as a leading voice in the struggle against slavery in the United States. He was soon speaking across the country, as well as in Europe, about his experiences in bondage. While her husband became a public figure, Anna raised the family and was an active member of the Boston Female Anti-Slavery Society. As Frederick's reputation grew, he moved the family from New Bedford, first to Lynn, Massachusetts in 1842, then to Rochester, New York in 1847. But it was in New Bedford that Frederick Douglass found his voice and began his path to prominence as one of the most important social reformers in the United States. This has been History Shorts. Thanks for watching.